On this episode of the Redefining Balance podcast, we are talking about how you can use boundaries to reach the goals in any area of your life. And we're going to talk a little bit about self-care too. So let's get into it. All right, my friends, I am so glad that you are here to hang out with me today because this is such an important topic and I am so excited to be talking about it with you. Now, this is something that I recently talked about on our member exclusive podcast. As a Life Balance member, we do podcasts that are just for our members. And this is something that we talked about a few weeks ago. And, you know, as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, this is something that really everyone should be hearing because although it's not the funnest topic to talk about, it is certainly effective when we're talking about reaching goals. Now, when this episode goes live, it is March, (laughs) the beginning of March. And the thing I love about kind of the middle towards the end of March is it really is like a second wind almost in reaching our goals. Because, well, for me, I set new goals every 90 days. And so as we're moving into the first of April, I'll be setting goals for a second 90-day period of time. And I'll be doing that right along with you if you're going to be joining us for the Life Balance Method, which starts on April 10th. And you can learn more about that over at yourliferocks.com. But even if you are someone who just sets goals at the beginning of the year, have that New Year's resolution, there's this time that happens around the first part of March where we start to really reevaluate, like, is that really a goal that I want? Or you might be celebrating victories that you've had along the way, or you might be thinking, gosh, I set that goal, kind of got off track. Now I need to get back on it. And it's with that spirit in mind that I decided to go ahead and have this be a topic on the show on our Redefining Balance podcast, because I do want to help you as you are either getting back on track, celebrating those victories, setting some new goals to really help you have an impactful year in 2021. Now at Your Life Rocks, we talk about self-care in a different way than most people do. It's not about spoiling ourselves or having extra focus over ourselves or on ourselves over other people. But I really truly believe that we are called to walk humbly and the world often talks about self-care in a way that comes in conflict with that. And it just doesn't sit right with me. And I don't, I think, you know, whenever I try to like do self-care, if I come into it with that kind of a spirit of taking care of myself in a above and beyond kind of a way, I feel really guilty about it. But when I do self-care in a different way, the way we're going to talk about today, I don't really feel guilty about it at all because, I mean, how how could you in the way that we're talking about it? Because as much as we're called to walk humbly, we're not called to like neglect ourselves either. And when I've talked about this on the podcast before and I've done a full YouTube video on it, I will link to it in the show description so you can go and check it out. But to me, self-care is really just simply taking care of ourselves. Like you think about the way that we take care of others other people in our life, our kids, for example. And that's kind of the way that we should be taking care of ourselves. Because somewhere along the way, we forget to take care of the physical things that we actually need. For example, with your kids, you know, you make sure that they get enough sleep. You make sure that they wear sunscreen when they're out playing. You make sure they don't eat too much sugar because you don't want them to be hyper and then crash or have emotional temper tantrums, right? And when they need it, we give them a time out, aka a quiet time to really think about what they did. And then afterwards, we talk about what lessons they can learn from it, right? What choices that they're going to make differently next time. Well, it simply is doing these kind of things for ourselves that we would do for our kids or anyone else that is in our care. That's self-care. It's truly just that simple. Now, as we begin to teach our kids to make good decisions and take care of themselves, we give them rules to follow, right? So that they kind of know, like, this is the expectation of good behavior. Now, do you remember when you were a kid? I'm curious if you were a kid like me that was like so excited to grow up and become an adult because no one could tell me what to do. Like I remember thinking that so many times, like when I grow up, I could have cake for dinner and no one can tell me otherwise, right? I can stay up as late as I want. I can have my room as messy as I want. I can do whatever I want because I get to be an adult. But now that I'm an actual adult, I do realize that there are still lots of rules. There's rules at work. There's rules that are like the law that you have to follow so you don't go to jail. And there's like society rules too that we all kind of agree to follow. But when it comes to taking care of myself, there's not really any rules around that. No one is telling me I've had too much sugar or I've stayed up too late or maybe I should go and take a nap. No one's telling me that. Now I get to experience the consequences of bad decisions, but 
that's not really fun either to experience those consequences. And to be honest, we might make some changes for good based on those consequences of not feeling good, but it's never something that's long lasting. But what if you could create some rules to help you live your very best life? Like the rules that are really gonna help you live into all of those goals that you set. You know, when you're daydreaming about what things could be like in a different job or if your house was a certain way or if your health was a certain way, right? Like we kind of think about like all of these things when we're setting goals. But what if you could actually reach those goals just by following some simple rules? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, I do understand that some of you might be a little bit rebellious like me. (laughs) When you hear the word rule, you're like, I don't like rules. I don't wanna follow rules. That sounds so boring. Think about it more as boundaries, okay? Boundaries, I think, is an easier thing for us as adults to be able to wrap our head around. Now, often, when I hear people talking about setting boundaries, I think about boundaries in the way that I want other people to treat me, what I will allow in relationships, things like that. But this is really self-care boundaries. Now, whether you want to call them rules or whether you want to call them boundaries, however you want to kind of set these limits up for yourself, the great thing is, is that you are setting them up for yourself. No one else is telling you what to do. You still get to be your own boss, but you're setting the bar for yourself on how you want to live your life. So this is exactly what we're going to be talking about this episode. I'm going to walk you through some steps on how you can do this for yourself to set up these boundaries. Okay, so first and foremost, we have to focus on our goals, right? At Your Life Rocks, we talk about setting goals in every area of life. So if you take the free weekly success planning course, you can go to weeklysuccessplanning.com. You can also find it inside the Your Life Rocks app. If you don't yet have the Your Life Rocks app, you can get it totally for free in your app store. In there, you're gonna find quarterly lifestyle guides. So it's like tips and inspiration for all the different areas of your life. You're also gonna find the free course, Weekly Success Planning, and a weekly planning checklist, essentially, that you can be working off of each and every single week. Now, when you take that free course, part of that is helping you set goals for every area of your life. And so if you don't yet have kind of those goals or those visions for yourself, I highly recommend you go and grab that free course and you start setting some of these goals. Because I mean, honestly, we can all think about like, this is the major goal that we have, right? In the life balance method, we call that a lifestyle goal. And those kind of goals are big, right? They're things that are gonna change your lifestyle. They're they're big focuses that affect multiple areas of life, multiple people in your family or your friend group. But really, when was the last time you set a goal for your faith or having fun in your life, right? (laughs) Typically, our goals are health-related, relationship-related, work-related, maybe financial, maybe home, but very rarely some of those other smaller areas of our life. But when you have like a direct intention on your faith, your marriage, your parenting, your career, health, home, finances, and friends and fun, well, then you are really moving forward in your life. And mind you, we're not talking about huge life-changing goals in all of these different areas. No, my friend, they are small, simple goals. So for example, if your lifestyle goal, the bigger thing that you're working towards is buying a new home. Your health goal is not going to be losing 50 pounds. Your health goal might be, I'm going to work on getting my water in in the next 90 days. That's my health goal. Drink more water, walk more steps, like whatever it is, but it's small, simple goals in those other areas of your life. But when you're thinking about setting those goals in all of those different areas of your life, number two, do a little bit of daydreaming. What if you reached all of those goals? What would your life look like? Oftentimes in our life balance membership, the very first thing that I recommend that you do is to take our Clear the Chaos course. It's a seven-day audio course. And in there, one of the days, we are setting up an ideal week. Like we're really thinking like if everything worked perfectly, this is how I would want my week to go. And we're using that as like a blueprint to work towards. But I want you to think about this in the overall picture of your life. Like what ideally would you want your life to look like? What would that look like for your health, for the way that you show up in your faith, for where you live and what your home looks like and your marriage and what is that like? And how are you as a mom in this daydream picture? Now, before you get the wrong idea, I am not about perfection, right? Like true life has its ups and downs. And I truly believe that those ups and downs, probably more of the downs, really strengthen our faith more than anything else, right? So it's never about perfection or aiming for perfection. But it really is about casting that blueprint of what we want to be working towards, right? So that we know what direction we want to be going in. And that blueprint can change 
life changes, right? We make different decisions, decide, uh, maybe that's not what I want for my life. But having a basic blueprint to start working towards definitely does help. So if you were living into that blueprint, you're reaching all of those goals and all of those different areas of your life, what would your day look like? What choices would you be making in that perfect blueprint? I said the word perfect, I know. But that blueprint picture of your life, what choices would you be making? What would your morning start off be doing? What would you, how would you be spending your day? How would you be spending your evenings? Think about all those different choices that you are making. Because when we're talking about rules and boundaries, it really is about making good choices, right? That's what we tell our kids. Like these are to help you make good choices. And then when they mess up, well, was that a good choice that you made? No, it wasn't, right? So we're thinking about it more along the lines of that because we have a choice, right? If we want to eat our vegetables or if we want to eat donuts, like we have those different choices in our life. But saying like, this is my rule for this particular area, or this is my boundary, this is the standard way that I am choosing to live, then you are making a choice to start living into that blueprint. You kind of see where I'm going with this? Setting these rules for the way that we want to behave, the choices that we want to make, the way that we want to live our life can drastically move us closer to that goal that we are trying to get to. So with that blueprint in mind, The next step is to start creating a goal or rather a rule for each area of life. Yeah, just one rule, not 10 rules, not five rules, not three rules, one rule for each area of life. What is that boundary, that bar? For me, as much as I kind of want to rebel against the word rule, a rule just feels more permanent than any of the other words. So that's the word I keep coming back to. But you could use the word boundary, again, if that's something that you feel a little bit better with. But one thing for each area of your life. Now, once you stick to it for about six weeks, you can add another rule or boundary in. And it's really hard. I promise you, this is so hard because you wanna like write out 12 rules. Like when I did this for myself the other day and I was thinking about like my health, man, I came up with like 10 rules of drinking water, of getting steps in, of the things that I won't eat that often or limit. You know, there's a lot of different rules that I started to put up for myself. But we have to realize what would happen if our kids came home from school and we sat them down and we said, these are the new 20 rules that you need to follow. They would rebel. Like it would not be fun times. I have teenagers. Trust me, it would not be a great evening after all of those rules. And you know what would end up happening? negotiation, justification. Okay, well, maybe not this rule, not that rule. And and it's hard to keep up with so many rules all at once, right? You kind of forget like, oh, was that a rule? (laughs) I don't remember. And then they start breaking the rules and then it's hard to reinforce them. So it's best to kind of start with one rule for each area of your life. Do it for like six weeks and then you can add another rule if you feel like you need to. Some areas of your life you might find, I really only need one rule in this particular area. For example, one of the rules that I have, the only rule that I have created for my marriage and my relationship with my husband is that I will always consider what his needs are because sometimes I get so focused on my own needs and I forget he's got needs too. (laughs) And not just like physical needs, but like emotional needs, right? Like I always get so focused on his, I'll take care of the physical needs, making sure his laundry's done and, you know, things like that. But then I forget like the emotional needs, but I can get so focused on my emotional needs, but forget all about my physical needs of sleep and good nutrition and all of those other things, right? And so that's the rule that I have in my marriage is that I will stay focused on his emotional needs as much as his physical needs. Now, just like when you are setting new boundaries for your kids, setting new rules, you want to give them praise when they stay within the boundaries, right? That's what works. And so you want to do that for yourself too. Setting up a structure of being able to evaluate how the rules are going for you and the choices that you made is really important. And so that's really the last tip is to really think about how you're going to be praising yourself when you stay within the boundaries, when you make good choices, and what's going to happen when you break a rule. Just like when we're taking care of our kids, right? Like, how are we going to give positive reinforcement for good behavior? And how are we going to correct bad behavior? We kind of need to do the same thing for ourselves. Now, obviously, it would be weird and probably a little horrible to punish yourself. So let's just take that off the table. 
But what about giving yourself some time to reflect on your choices, just like we do with our kids? Now, this is a great exercise to add to the end of your day routine. You know, I often talk about, and a lot of people talk about, doing gratitude journaling at the end of the day or really thinking through what you're grateful for, the blessings that came into your day. And that is a great practice for happiness. It definitely changes things when you do that. But what if you also started thinking about looking back at your day for opportunities of lessons learned? Some choices that if you could do them over again, you would maybe choose something different and choose that next time. For the longest time, I've kept like a journal where at night I would write down five things that were awesome that happened, blessings, things I'm grateful for, and then three lessons I've learned that day. And sometimes they were, you know, something silly and not really that important. And sometimes they were something big, like you can no longer trust so-and-so, a friendship that maybe had some bad things happen. Maybe you learned a lesson at work on an expectation that your boss has or someone else got a promotion and not you and you were able to kind of learn a lesson from that on what excellence might look like or what someone with a promotion might look like or what they might be doing in your current company. It's not about dwelling on the negative. It's not about beating yourself up. It's just truly thinking about the lessons that we learn because when we can do that, we can be a lot more present in our day-to-day lives. We cannot take every day for granted and we can really truly look at it for what it is and learn from it. Learn from the blessings, learn from the things that maybe we're not so blessing, but maybe they are a blessing in disguise. So let's just review what these steps are for creating more boundaries in your life so that you can help you reach your goals as you move forward. First and foremost, focus on your goals. Set the goals for all areas of your life. Number two, with those goals in mind, do some daydreaming and cast that blueprint of what your life would look like if all of those goals were met. And then use that vision to create your own rules. What choices would you make in order to achieve that blueprint or to maintain that blueprint that you have imagined for yourself and set one goal for each area of your life, excuse me, one rule for each area of your life that's gonna help you reach that goal. And then number three is to set up or add into your routine how you can reflect back and really learn from the choices that you're making so that you can coach yourself, guide yourself into making some better choices as you move forward. Now, before we end this episode, I just want to encourage you that if you are someone who has set goals, maybe at the beginning of the year, you set some goals for the different areas of your life, or maybe one particular goal that you've set, and maybe you're struggling with that. And I just want to encourage you that, you know, when we set goals, we are stepping out in courage that we are going to do something different. And sometimes it is harder than we thought it was going to be. But that doesn't mean that we're not successful. That doesn't mean that we're never gonna achieve that goal. That doesn't mean that we haven't made progress going forward as we reach towards that goal, even if we haven't really hit the goal or made the big strides that we thought that we would by now. Because my friend, it is easy to set a goal. It is really easy to dream about it, to write it down, to plan for it. It is a complete different ball game to wake up each and every single day and make choices that are gonna support that goal. And even if you do, sometimes the outcome is out of our hands. Like we can't always control what the outcome is gonna be. Even when we put the best effort in, even when we do the things consistently like people tell us to do, sometimes it's just hard. (laughs) It's hard. But when we can really look at that and say, okay, but what lessons have I learned? What progress have I made? You can still get there. And not to give up on yourself because we're coming up on the end of the first 90 days of the year here in a few weeks. I know it feels a little bit premature saying that because it is still the beginning of March and it's still plenty of time in the first 90 days to crush it. But we also are coming up on the next 90 days and then another 90 days after that and another 90 days after that. And if we keep just putting one foot in front of the other and moving forward, eventually we're gonna look back and be like, wow, look how far we've come. Look how far you've come and reaching this goal that you've set for yourself, and especially true for the blueprint that you might have for your life. And you know what? Again, blueprints, they change all of the time. We find as we start to build certain things that we need to make changes because it doesn't all fit together the way that we thought it would, or the things that we thought we liked might be different now. And that's totally okay too. Give yourself permission to do that But be courageous in setting some of these boundaries for yourself, some goals for yourself in all of these different areas of your life, because I truly believe that God wants the best for you. And when you're being able to set these small goals 
in all of the different areas of your life and have a system to follow in order to achieve them, it is amazing the stress that just kind of disappears when there's order to the chaos going on around you. And trust me, that is spoken from experience. So we will be opening up the life balance method here very, very soon. It does kick off on April 10th, but in the next couple of weeks, we will be launching that. And you can get on the wait list by going to yourliferocks.com. Click on the link at the top of the page for the life balance method, and you can sign up to learn when it opens up. And it's truly a 12-week program to walk you through step by step on reaching the goals that you've set for every area of your life. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Next week, we have a special guest coming on talking about how we can manage our careers and still be great parents all under one roof (laughs) when it can get a little bit hard, how we can really show up and be the best selves, best version of ourselves possible. So stay tuned for next week for that interview. And until then, keep building a life that rocks. Bye. Hey, just because the episode's over doesn't mean we have to stop hanging out. Head on over to Instagram and follow me there. You can find me at your.life.rocks. Or if you're more of a Facebook kind of girl, join our community of working Christian moms just like you. You can search Your Life Rocks over on Facebook and connect with us there. And if you're ready to truly create lasting balance and get results in your life, maybe it's time for you to join Life Balance Membership. Download the Your Life Rocks app in iTunes or in Google Play. You can upgrade to the membership right inside the app. And if you're looking for more resources to help you create more balance, head on over to yourliferocks.com.